Welcome back to Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Pikmin 2. In the last episode, we finished the Cavern of Chaos. And in this episode, we're actually just going to regroup um, our Pikmin, get a new party uh, put together, and then take that off to the next dungeon in the area, uh, the Hole of Heroes. But anyway, I did promise last episode that we would go over what HP regeneration is. I'm not sure I've mentioned it before, but anyway, HP re uh, regeneration is a skill that some enemies in the game have. And the same goes for in Pikmin 1. Um, all enemies, I believe, have it to a certain extent. But for most of them, it is so, like, it hardly happens at all that you don't have to worry about it at all. As you've seen, some enemies, re some enemies regenerate after death. And then they come back to life, like the Spotty Bull Bear and the Gatling Groink. However, there are also some enemies that will get back their life um, just on the field. And in Pikmin 1, I'm not sure how many enemies have it. I can tell you one enemy that has it in Pikmin 1 is the Armored Cannon Beetle. Which is kind of annoying because it's one of the more difficult enemies to fight. And in this game, I'm not sure how many enemies do have re HP regeneration, but as you saw in the battle, you might have noticed that at one point we got the segmented Crofster boss's HP to red, but then it got its HP um, into the yellow zone. So it has HP regeneration also, so that's pretty dangerous. And I'm not sure how many other enemies have it. I'm sure there are quite a few that do, but because most enemies can be defeated without much trouble, you probably just don't encounter it that often. And the Pikmin won't stop going after the rocks, which is annoying because they're all flowers. One thing that I always felt pretty annoying, at least about the first game, was that... No, no, in this game too, only a certain amount of small of Pikmin can, like, be working on grass or rocks that uh, give you nectar from beneath. Um, only a certain amount of Pikmin can be working on that at once, so sometimes it just takes m way more long than it should. Like, I think only five can work on it at once. And another note about this bamboo halfpipe here, if you haven't defeated the cannon beetle larva nearby it earlier, what will happen sometimes is if it shoots at you while you're running up the halfpipe, the rock will fit into the halfpipe and roll through the halfpipe really quickly. So if you didn't kill it earlier, make sure you do it, because that trap can kill all your Pikmin. I'm detecting the howls of countless creatures in the hole ahead. It is nearly deafening. Sound analysis indicates a wide variety of creatures nesting here. It is a melting pot of life. Like the Great American Melting Pot, only with monsters, basically. And also, like, they actually do mean it because of the most the most variety of enemies are encountered here. Mr. President, be extremely careful. I'll allow your jobs to protect him at all costs. Uh, anyway, um, the most types of enemies in the game are encountered there. Um, this is the first dungeon that I would say is absolutely worthy of a 5-star rating. The Hole of Heroes is the longest dungeon in the game. Has every element. Of course, that's a given by this point in the game. You're going to be expecting you need many Pikmin. Typically, what I would recommend is bringing along 20 of each Pikmin type because it is a very balanced dungeon, all things considered. There is one floor, two floors actually, where it would be a good idea to have a good amount of blue Pikmin and it's likely the blue Pikmin would die. So maybe I'd recommend bringing along slightly less purples and slightly more blues, or slightly less whites and slightly more blues. Probably less whites. If anything, whites are the least used Pikmin in this dungeon. Uh, this, and each floor kind of, uh, has a different theme to it. Like, this theme has burrowing enemies. Um, oh, man. Uh, and also, apparently, dwarf orange bulbs that fall from above. One thing that can happen here is that there sometimes are sheer wigs as well as the sheer rubs. In case you forgot, sheer wigs are the green ones that fly. But they sometimes just don't appear here at all. One of the weird things about this dungeon is that it actually tends to only have one treasure per floor. Um, so... Your objectives here are pretty straightforward, and although it has the most floors, it doesn't take nearly as long as the final dungeon to clear. So, this might actually not take that long. It might take as long as Cavern of Chaos. Over here, we just got the first dungeon item, the uh, Corpulent Nut. Which pretty much is the same as any other nut, really. They're not that firm. Oh, wow! Could that have been taken... I didn't even mean to say that. I said not. But I, said, but I slurred it slightly, so it sounded like I said it's not that important. Ugh. That's like a Mother 3 pun. In case you don't know, like, I know I've mentioned Mother 3. Great game. Absolutely, you must play it. And I really want to do a Let's Play of it one of these days. I'm not even shy about mentioning it. I really want to do a Let's Play of Mother 3 at some point. But it has some characters in it that just say such bad puns. Ugh. But I'm used to bad puns in my life, so... I guess I have slightly a higher endurance to them than other people, but you know, it's just it's always so grown worthy. And as you can see, our treasure gauge is spazzing out here. You know what that means, and if you don't, let me tell you what it means. 
It means a bomb rock! No, never mind. What it means is there's an antenna beetle somewhere on the floor. We haven't found those since uh, Snaggered Hole. They're like the Puffy Blowhog, antenna beetles are one of the game's rarest enemies. Um, but I really hate them, so I'm pretty glad they're rare. And there just happens to be one on this floor, because the Hole of Heroes brings back almost every enemy you've encountered, and if you can believe it, it brings back a lot of boss enemies from earlier, too. But we won't go into those until we encounter them. Let's just focus on the matters at hand. That was pretty awesome right there, I just flipped over all the Anode Beetles. I really like, like, how this game hardly ever slows down on you. One thing that I do have a problem with is that, um... And this is getting really technical, but the device I used to, to uh, record footage for this game, the uh, footage and audio, obviously, the Elgato uh, video capture card, it's useful because it's just really easy to use. Um, I think it can be used for PC and Mac. I have I use a Mac, personally. Um, but the thing about it is, for the different formats of audio and video that you can get, um, there are two ways to record, and what I've had to use for Pikmin 2 is oh god another bomb rock you're kidding me wow okay note to sell bomb rocks often appear in the alcoves on this floor so just keep that in mind i guess the theme of this floor is annoying bugs and stupid bomb rocks pretty dangerous combination but anyway as i was saying there are two formats that i can use to record from elgato and the one that i had to use for this game was unfortunately the one that gives you less quality for the visuals um the reason for that is that when i start recording footage I've noticed, and this is the only game so far that's done it, for Pikmin 2, um, I'm not allowed to use the better format, because it just keeps slowing down to the point where it makes it difficult to play the game. And it's just awful. So I had to use this second format that just doesn't look as good. But after a while, I've, I've gotten used to it. I don't think, I don't really think it looks that bad. It really only looks, it's only noticeably worse on my computer. The truth is that YouTube blurs the image of all videos so much <laughs> that it makes it almost impossible to tell that this format is worse than the one I was initially using. I know that I first mentioned this like way back in the Awakening Wood, but I only thought about it now for some reason. Eh, I can't even remember why I brought it up, but I did. So there you have it. Uh, anyway, uh, heading down to the next floor. I know the theme of the next floor is blowhogs. We actually encounter every single variety of blowhog in the game cramped together on one sub-level. And I believe that, yeah, there's walls. They just love to put walls and blowhogs on the same floor. Because it's annoying how the effect of whatever a blowhog is shooting at you just goes through the wall. Especially with withering blowhogs. Because they make your Pikmin so susceptible to other enemies because they can no longer be flower Pikmin. That's one thing you generally want to work on is preserving your flowers. It might, fall, it might sound like a small thing, but one thing you want to get better at is, number one, avoid volatile dweebles that drop down randomly. Yes, there are volatile dweebles on this floor. But also, try to get used to fighting enemies and defeating them before they can shake your Pikmin off. Like with watery and fiery blue hogs, what I try to do is fight them while they're shooting their element out, because while they're shooting the element out, they can't be shaking the Pikmin off at the same time, because their animations aren't that um, versatile. That's one thing that I've heard is actually pretty impressive about Skyward Sword is that the enemies have so many different animations and reactions. But the truth is, that's been going on in Nintendo games for a long time. Like, in Pikmin 2, there's a lot of that. In Wind Waker, there's actually a lot of reactions, especially with, like, uh, Bokoblins and Moblins. If you never noticed before, try using, like, bombs or other strange items on Bokoblins and Moblins. You get some pretty interesting results. As well as the Skull Hammer. There's a lot of extra animations in the Wind Waker for enemies getting hit with the Skull Hammer. I'm sure I mentioned that in the LP. If you haven't watched my Wind Waker LP, I'm pretty proud of it, so go ahead and give that one a watch. I'm not sure how many uh, le how many games I'm going to be playing that are really going to be as long. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but I already have some footage for the next Let's Play recorded that I'm going to be doing, and it could potentially be longer than Wind Waker. I'm not sure. It might be. But let's not talk too much about that. Uh, anyway, right over here we have another treasure, and another Volatile Dweevil! Great! Jeez, how annoying. Oh man, and the, it looks like the blue Pikmin couldn't get, get away from that Volatile Dweevil in time. Volatile Dweevils are very evil. They are so wicked. Like, other Dweevils, generally they won't fight you unless you really trouble them and are trying to get your treasures past them. But Volatile Dweevils are just jerks. They're <laughs> really. Another one? Are you serious? Ugh. I've never had this many appear before, like on this floor. Usually there's only like one or two, but three? A whopping three? That's unforgivable. Anyway, now that we have the one treasure on the floor, let's just head down to the next one before the Volatile Devil gives us any trouble.
and we'll continue with the Hall of Heroes next episode of the particularly difficult challenge.